Hi, I'm Barry Ostrowski. At RWJ Barnabas Health, we believe that everyone needs to be informed about the important health care issues affecting their lives. That's why we're proud to support the important educational programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Agnes Veris NJTV studio at Two Gateway. Funding has been provided by RWJ Barnabas Health, the law firm of Gibbons PC, New Jersey Resources, Summit Medical Group, a physician-owned multi-specialty medical practice serving northern and central New Jersey in 70 locations, Verizon, Delta Dental of New Jersey, Everyone deserves a healthy smile. And by International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825. Promotional support provided by ROINJ, Informing and Connecting Businesses in New Jersey. And by Insider NJ. I'm Steve Adubato. This is a very important United States Senate special. Um, we are now joined by Republican candidate for the United States Senate, Bob Hugan, and um, welcome. Great to be with you, Steve. Thanks for having me. Good to have you. In the uh, second half of this program, you'll be joined by the senior United States Senator in the great state of New Jersey, Robert Menendez. Uh, by the way, you were just telling me before we got on the air, this wasn't your plan to run for the U.S. Senate. What changed? No, I, I've had a great life. You know, I was born in Hudson County, grew up in Hudson County, raised my family, my wife in Union City, uh, sorry, in Union County. But we were, frankly, we were just morally offended that he was going to be reelected virtually unopposed. Senator Menendez. Senator Menendez, virtually unopposed, after all the things he'd done, violating federal law, abusing the power of his office, and frankly, failing the people of New Jersey. Ineffective. 25 years in Washington, 16 years with a Democratic president, and New Jersey's dead last. We get the lease back from Washington of any state in the country. The people of New Jersey deserve better. So it's interesting. Uh, by the way, Senator Menendez will be here to uh, respond. He will not see this interview. But the fact is there was a, um, that trial that the federal government brought, it did not succeed in finding him guilty. The federal government opted not to, not to pursue it. The United States Senate, quote, seri seriously admonished the senator. But, um, and, and said he was guilty of violating federal, he violated federal law in, in the letter. Not the courts, no, the, the U.S. Senate. The, yes, bipartisan. Okay. Let me ask you this. Since you mentioned uh, character in office, characters in office, Donald Trump. Yeah. How much money did you contribute to Donald Trump when he was running in 2016? And if you contributed that much, what did you see in him as a leader that caused you to say, yeah, he's the right person I, I, to lead our nation? I, I did contribute to the Republican Party primarily was my contribution. What, what I saw in 2016... But you gave to him as well. I, yes, but the majority of my contribution to the Republican Party to support the general election. <clears throat> what I saw in Washington in 2016 was we were stagnating, and it was not good. It needed disruption. Well, unfortunately, we now have dysfunction, and the reason I'm running is because we can do better. We've got to elect good people who are going to lead with integrity and honor, and are going to put the people of New Jersey first, not party and politics. Mm -hmm. I've been a collaborator all my life of working with others to produce results, not just talking about results, but delivering results. It's not about talk. It's not about party. It's about results, and it's about people. Is Donald Trump a person of character and integrity, in your opinion? I, I, don't, I don't think he leads in the way that I would want to lead. I want to bring people together. I want to put people ahead of party character and politics. And integrity. Yeah, I, I think I've led my life in terms of when I, when I was the first in my family to go to college, I joined the Marine Corps after I graduated college. I was the only person right, in my thank class. Thank you for your service. Thank, and and, and I've, I've tried to raise my family in that same way of responsibility of doing things. My daughter works at Chobani Yogurt in New York, which is a great company. Both my sons are infantry officers in the Marine Corps serving our country. So I, I've led my life with integrity and honor, and I set the values for me. And this race is about New Jersey, putting the people of New Jersey first to make sure we deliver sure. for them. It's partly about that. A lot of it is. It's also about who will stand up to President Trump for those who have serious problems. Forget about policy for a second. Right. I'll get off the Trump thing in a second. Yeah. 
His demeanor, his leadership style, his tweeting and spending time saying that uh, 3,000 people did not die in yeah. Puerto Rico and it was a Democratic hoax. When you see that and you realize that you contributed to the Republican Party who contributed to him becoming president, not to mention what he said about Senator McCain not being a war hero and you giving your service to this nation, I'll get off after this. How much of that bothers you? It bothers me a lot, Steve. We need leaders who are going to stand up and do the right thing to bring people together. We've been too long, too partisan in this country, whether it's Senator Menendez, President Trump. We need to stop fighting each other and working together for solutions and lead with honor and dignity. That's why I've led my whole life. I've been independent my whole life. As I told you, I was the only person in my class to go in the Marine Corps. I went to a company almost 20 years ago with six weeks of cash where everybody said, don't do that, Bob. Selgene? Yeah, when I went to Selgene, six weeks of cash the company had. Everybody said, don't go there. I've been independent in my life all the way. I'm going to stand up against anybody who does anything that's not good for the people in New Jersey. I'm not beholden to any including political... Including the president. In, absolutely, including the president. Remember, I'm not beholden to any political organization. Mm -hmm. I didn't become the mayor, the assemblyman, the state senator, the congressman. I don't owe anybody, anybody in a political organization. I'm not filling out any special... self-funding to a large degree? Virtually, yeah. The campaign is pretty much self-funded. We're due raising a little bit of money. But also, I'm not taking, I'm not follow, fill, uh, filling out any mm -hmm. special interest questionnaire. When I go to Washington, I'm going to stand up for the people of New Jersey. That's what this is about. And by the way, including the NRA, if I'm not mistaken, you did not fill out I'm, the NRA. I, I will not fill out any special interest questionnaire. I'm going to be my own man. Can we talk tax policy? Sure. Uh, federal government through uh, President Trump, Republican Congress, they decide, you know what, tax reform. We're going to cut certain taxes, uh, business taxes, I believe capital gains tax cut as well. I, I, don't, I don't. Well, the business uh, tax business. cut, my, my bad. Um, the $10,000 deduction, right, the cap on the yes. deduction, property taxes, massive in New Jersey, I think, uh, number one in the nation. It's unaffordable. State income tax, okay, fine. I happen to live in Montclair. No matter where you live, you know you're paying a lot in taxes. President of the Republicans said, you know what, ten grand, that's it. In fact, a House committee dealing with this issue over the last few days said, that's it. IRS, lock this in. Don't let New Jersey or anyone yeah. else get out of that. Ten well, grand, good deal? Bad deal, bad deal. Let's be clear, Steve. Senator Menendez was on the Senate Finance Committee and sat in his hands, did nothing for the people of New Jersey. Maybe that cap could have been $15,000. You mean to stop it? To, w negotiate. Involve yourself. Don't just sit on the sidelines and ignore the interests of the people of New Jersey. Maybe it could have been a $15,000 cap, or it could have been tiered over time. He did nothing to protect the interests of the people of New Jersey. When I go there, I'm going to work to have that cap lifted. What we, should it be? It, it needs to be higher. It's unfair. New Jersey is so unaffordable. And remember, that's taking a subsidy away from New Jersey, which is bad for the state and bad for the people, mm -hmm. bad for property tax values, so many different things I could tell you about how it's bad. But you can't, you can't just sit here and say, we didn't do nothing about it. We've got to go do something about it. And Did you propose raising it to 15, 20 grand? I think we need to escalate it over time. Okay. But, but let's say we take that subsidy away. We've taken that subsidy away. We're 50 out of 50. We get the lease back from Washington. Where are people to say, give us something else in exchange mm -hmm. then? I was at Fort Monmouth last week. What a disgrace. The place is a ghost town. We lost $3 billion of economic activity a year while people in Washington sat on their hands, including Senator Menendez. Federal dollars to Fort Monmouth. Well, no, not, well, we lost 5,500 jobs, 10,000 contractors, right. but the economic value to the state was $3 billion. And, and you know what? The national taxpayer, as taxpayers, federal taxpayers, we didn't get a benefit from it either because the savings didn't materialize. Let's do this health care real quick. Um, you, uh, are you concerned about the efforts to roll back, cut back the Affordable Care Act as originally constituted? Listen, the Affordable Care Act was a small step in the right direction in many ways, but also a bad step in some other directions. We, health care... What part do you like? What part don't you like? Well, listen, we need to expand coverage. I think the Medicaid expansion was a good thing. The focus on prevention and wellness, protecting patients with pre-existing conditions and absolute... All good. Absolute, all, all good. What don't, one thing you don't like. Oh, it was so bad for the working poor. It made people pay a premium. And in New Jersey, $80,000 family of four doesn't have $3,700. You didn't have insurance if you couldn't afford a $3,700 deductible for the bronze plan. It was really a fraud on the working poor. There were many good things, but many bad things. But the bad thing, Steve, about health care is it's a bigger issue. The American people deserve better care at lower costs. 
And, and I, I, I was on the board of Atlantic Health for 11 years, forward-looking, evolving a healthcare system, been involved in biotech 19 years. We need to do more for the American people for health care. Let's stay on the health care thing. Pharmaceutical prices, uh, you've seen ads, you've seen Mr. Hugan's ads on TV, you've seen Senator Menendez's ads. Yeah. Real quick on this. Um, reducing the price of pharmaceutical drugs and the effort that a Menendez camp, the Menendez campaign says, you know what, Bob Hugan, when he was head of Celgene, he fought to have generic drugs, a specific drug, um, specific generic drugs that would uh, potentially replace, is it, uh, let, me, let me get this right, uh, Revlimid, yep. Re Revlimid. Okay, it's a cancer drug. Yes. The argument from the Menendez campaign is, you know what, Bob Eugen did not want a generic drug that was out there, wanted to stop that. They spent millions of dollars on lobbyists and others to stop it because it would have been cheaper for consumers, better profits for Celgene and for Mr. Eugen. You say? Steve, lies and mischaracterizations. Celgene's been investigated by the Obama administration and said, Never anything was it ever instigated against the company. The Obama and Justice Department inter interviewed or investigated Senator Menendez and indicted him. Let's be clear. That company did major reform in advancing the fight against Any fines cancer. Have to be paid? No fines. No. There have been settlements, but no fines. The government has never found Selgin Sel guilty. Selgin's never done anything that's improper and illegal. Absolutely. Just lies and mischaracterizations. The most generous patient assistance program in the world. And you think about it increased R&D spending 37% a year, more than five times any price increases. 90% of, nearly 90% of all Celgene patients never paid more than $50 for their prescription. If all Americans could have the same kind of results and access to all medicines they have to Celgene's products, we'd be a much better country. I'm going to fight for that when we're in Washington. Mr. Hugan, let's do this. Uh, immigration. Yes. You need a wall? Listen, we need, we need to stop using immigration as a political football and a tool. There are people who don't want to solve this issue because they think it's politically better for them. We shouldn't have sanctuary cities. We should not pit one should law. Not have should not have sanctuary cities. We should not pit one law enforcement against the other. Every should we separate families as the no. Trump administration let, did? Let me, let me just say the Good. immigration. Sorry. No sanctuary cities. We need a secure border. You're not a country and a sovereign nation if you don't have secure borders. Control who comes in and who doesn't. Immigration has made this country great. My grandparents are immigrants. Same but here. we need comprehensive and compassionate immigration reform. We need better H-1B visas. Staple a green card to PhD can when they get a PhD degree for software, computer mm. science. They're job creators of the future. We can't run the tourism business or the agriculture industry in New Jersey if we don't have seasonal visas. But we need comprehensive and compassionate reform. People who are building a constructive and productive life in America should have a pathway to citizenship, not shorter than people here illegally, but they should have a pathway to citizenship. Real quick, gun violence. Uh, again, you did not take the, uh, did not fill out the questionnaire from the NRA. Absolutely uh, not. One gun law that needs to be changed to, to, I, to potentially protect people from senseless gun violence. Yeah. You say, Mr. Eugen? You know, first of all, I put kids and teachers first. My sister's a retired school teacher from Union City, 35 years. Guns for teachers? No, I, I think each local community should decide what's best to protect their community and do it but whatever you don't like way. The idea. No, I, I don't think teachers should should be armed personally, but the local districts should be in control of it. We need better background checks to make sure that people with mental illness that should not have access to any weapon, forget any weapon. So we, we need appropriate, strong laws, but we need also the right to protect our homes and our family. And sportsmen, I'm a fisherman more than a hunter, but people have the right to, to do sports and all the kind of hunting they want to do that's a fair and appropriate. Um, so I, I, think, I think New Jersey's leading the way in that regard, but we've got to make sure we put teachers and kids first. Bob Eugen. You're the Republican candidate for the United States Senate. It was not your plan <laughs> to do this. No. Nope. You opted to do it, and we appreciate you coming in here on public television. You're seeing us on Fios, on the radio as well, a lot of places. We thank you. Uh, wish the best to you and your family, and thank you for responding to the questions. Thanks very much, Steve. Great to be with you. You got it. Right after this, folks, we joined by the senior United States Senator in New Jersey, Robert Menendez. To see more State of Affairs with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at stateofaffairsnj.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD, And follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. Welcome back, folks. I just want to remind everyone that on November 6th, there will be a very important election, not just for congressional seats in New Jersey and across the country in the House, but uh, key U.S. Senate races. 
Joining us now in one of those key races is the senior senator from the great state of New Jersey, United States Senator Robert Menendez. Good to see you, Senator. Good to be with you, Steve. Um, interesting. Donald Trump, you and I were talking before we got on camera. You have actually never met him. No, not, not before he became president, no. Okay. He did. There was a phone call we'll talk about later to you. Um, your impressions of him as president, as a leader, and if you could take policy out of it for a second, stylistically as a leader, impact on the nation. Go. Um, I, I don't think he leads. I don't think he leads. He embraces the most authoritarian figures in the world and gives the back of the hand to our closest allies. He doesn't bring people together as we expect of the president in common cause. He divides us by who we are, what we look like, where we came from, and who we love. Uh, I expect a president who tries to bring the American people together. Uh, he doesn't uh, reach out in the Congress, unlike other presidents, including President Bush, who I served under, uh, to try to forge bipartisan compromise. So I, I, I don't think that those are the characteristics of a leader we want, particularly in the highest office in the land. Bob Bugin was here a couple days ago. We did the uh, interview with him. He had very strong, clear things to say. So listen, I'll disagree with the president when I think he's wrong, and I'll agree with him when he's right. You say? I say uh, baloney. Uh, the reality is, is that he was Trump's finance chair in New Jersey, a delegate for Trump at the Republican Excuse me convention. Excuse Senator. He said, when I asked him that question, he said, I gave the money to the Republican National Committee. No, he, he gave some to Trump before he gave it to, uh, before he gave it to Chris Christie uh, when he was in the race. Then he gave it to Trump. Uh, then he also gave it to the Republican National Committee. He was a delegate for Trump at the convention. He was his finance chair in the state. But more importantly, he has consistently taken views along with the president that are against the interests of New Jersey. And he gives large, large amounts of money to the entities that support the president, like the Heritage Foundation. He gave them a half a million dollars. And that institution is opposed to everything he now says that he is a part of in New Jersey, a woman's right to choose, reasonable gun safety measures, the Affordable Care Act. All of a sudden, I don't give a half a million dollars. I don't have a half a million dollars, but I don't give a half a million dollars to an entity that ultimately doesn't agree with all my core principles. That's who he is. He's another vote for President Trump. Now, you've been very critical of uh, <clears throat> Bob Ugin on the pharmaceutical side, said as the CEO of Celgene, you accused him uh, in your ads. I mean, you cannot miss these spots right up until the election on both sides. You said, you know what, as CEO, he really worked hard to keep generic drugs to people who were dealing with cancer because Celgene had a cancer drug that was more expensive. you really believe that? No question about it. Why would he do that? You know who says that? The President Trump's FDA commissioner called out Celgene as the worst company in the nation to stop generic drugs, cheaper drugs, from going to the marketplace. Signal them out. But beyond that, I think that Bob Eugen has a bigger problem. It's the $280 million that the federal government, uh, he ultimately uh, settled with the federal government for false uh, uh, pursuit of drugs off-label, meaning not what they were approved for, uh, for risking cancer patients, for potentially not letting them know about fatal side effects, for going after Medicare, Medicaid, and the VA system. Uh, and he settled for $280 million. That are, those aren't small potatoes. Ethically challenged? Well, look, I, I, and you know, there, are many, there are many ways to think about ethics, right? But one thing I'll say is if you preyed upon those most vulnerable, which is what Bob Eugen and his company did, cancer uh, patients who needed that specific drug that he raised by over 200 percent while he was lowering it in Russia by 50 percent, that he was stopping generics from going to the marketplace mm -hmm. here when he made a deal with a Russian company to do exactly that, have a generic version. When you prey among the most vulnerable, it says something about you. And so if you had the power of a United States senator, mm -hmm. would you not be preying among the most vulnerable among us? Senator, you've been in public life for how long? In yeah, public life, quick, like, uh, quick over 40, calculation, over 40 years. and you ran for the school board, if I'm not mistaken. Absolutely. It, it might have been 19 or 21. Yeah, I was right? 20 when I got elected. Okay. Yeah. So, long distinguished career. The question of ethics. The federal jury deadlock in your case. The U.S. Justice uh, Department of Justice opts not to bring a follow-up case. The United States Senate, the Ethics Committee, quote, severely admonishes you for quote accepting gifts from Dr. Solomon Melgan. The spots, again, you see them from Republicans and from Bob Eugen. You said you made mistakes. Could you be more specific? 
what mistakes do you actually feel you made, A and B? Um, could you understand a significant number of New Jersey and saying, I don't know if I trust Bob Menendez? Well, Steve, look, a couple things. First of all, as you noted, a federal judge exonerated us of the most significant charges. Uh, 11 out of 13 jurors of average New Jerseyans said we don't believe in the government's case, and several of them severely criticized the government for even bringing the case. And then a Republican Department of Justice uh, ultimately dropped everything. So uh, at the end of the day, I regret that my understanding of the disclosure rules uh, were different. Uh, based upon what I saw other members actually disclose, not disclose, and based upon my own understanding of the rules. Uh, so I regret that. And before the Ethics Committee decided, before the government was involved, I amended and took care of uh, virtually all of it. Uh, but what I have never made a mistake about is where I came from, who I'm fighting for, in this state. I'm fighting for everyday working families. I live that life. Bob Eugen is a multimillionaire. He doesn't live that life. Uh, I've lived a life. I'll, I have people judge my judgment uh, by when I, you know, bought a million people health care in New Jersey under the Affordable Care Act mm -hmm. and eliminated pre-existing condition discrimination for 3.8 million New Jerseyans. I have New Jerseyans wonder whether my judgment is right when I passed into law the major legislation uh, on uh, autism for the state that has the highest rate of autism. I'll let them judge how I went to fight for them after Sandy and bought $60 billion to the region. And when the government turned its back on Sandy victims, I reopened those cases and got $300 million for average New Jerseyans who were denied by their government. So I'll let them judge the totality of my work and my history. Senator, let's shift gears. Um, the ACA, the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, if you will. Mm -hmm. What's your greatest concern about the potential of the federal government through the Trump administration changing, dismantling, doing whatever to the Affordable Care Act, which many argue, you included, is far from perfect? Oh, absolutely. Not a perfect law. We had dramatic change in health care in the country. But what did it do, Steve? And this is what I'm afraid that the Trump administration has systematically gone about trying to kill the Affordable Care Act, which means for a million New Jerseyans losing their health insurance, which means for the 3.8 million New Jerseyans who have a pre-existing condition, the ability to be discriminated against as well. Uh, the, the lifetime caps that we eliminated mm -hmm. under the law so that if you had a serious illness, my, the Alzheimer that took my mother's life, uh, the costs that were involved, if she, hadn't, if she had lifetime caps, she'd be one illness away from losing everything mm -hmm. she ever had in life. So all of those uh, protections that were created on the Affordable Care Act, the expansion of health care and attempts to cost control are in the midst of being undermined by the Trump administration as it stands in federal court saying that the law is unconstitutional. And Bob, respectfully, Senator, Bob Eugen says that he supports many aspects of the Affordable Care Act, but the ones that are onerous on individuals in terms of what they'd have to pay for their coverage, he's against. You, you, Bob, Bob, isn't your position Bob, similar Bob, to that? Bob Eugen wants to have it every which way. Uh, and I guess when you have no record other than having gouged cancer patients and made a killing off of them, uh, when you is pay two hundred and eighty million dollars, is that the totality dollars? of his record as the CEO of Celgene? Yeah, absolutely. Look, you know, he's on a, in that suit of the federal government. He's there bragging about how these two drugs were the drivers of Celgene's profit. But these are the two drugs that they were promoting for purposes not approved by the Food and Drug Administration. Two drugs that had fatal, potentially fatal side effects that they never let doctors and patients know about. Two drugs that they ultimately raised the prices of dramatically. So at but the, the end of the did day, approve, uh, hold on, the FDA did not stop those drugs. Uh, oh, no, on the contrary. The FDA gave them a limited yes. approval. They went far beyond what they were approved for. And the FDA gave them warning after warning to stop what they were doing. My point is, you can't say, I like some of the Affordable Care Act, but I don't like all of it. You okay. can't say that I'm for a woman's right to choose and to give a half a million dollars to the Heritage Foundation that opposes a woman's right to choose. You can't say I'm for Judge Kavanaugh, who consistently has undermined in his decisions civil rights and, I believe, women's reproductive By rights. By the way, as we do this program, that is in question, the, the Kavanaugh nomination. Real quick, if I can do this, got about 
two and a half minutes, Senator, the role of the Department of Justice in terms of pursuing justice in criminal cases vis-a-vis -vis the role of the Trump administration in getting involved there, you say? Well, I say that, first of all, they, they, they should be going after the, the, the lady, you know, the information that Dr. Not Ford... Just that, I didn't mean just that case, but uh, oh, the general. president said, hey, listen, there are two Republican congressmen oh, yeah, who are being is, indicted by no. the uh, Department of Justice. What are you doing doing is, that? Telling a, Jeff, Jeff mm -hmm. Sessions as the attorney general, what are you doing doing that? Is that appropriate no, this, for the United this, this States a, president? The, the, we expect that of dictators and tyrants in the world to use... Uh, law enforcement against individuals because of their politics or for them because of their politics, uh, not in the United States of America. It's a perversion of our system of justice. Can you do immigration real quick? Sure. Uh, you f you're for strong borders. You're for the wall? No. Real quick, where do we need to go? Because where we are is not where most Americans want to be, Senator. Sure. Well, uh, we're, I want to be back where uh, what I did with John McCain when he was alive in the Gang of Eight passed in the Senate comprehensive reform, strong border protection, a pathway to legalization from the undocumented, a hard one, but a just one, the opportunity to think about future flows in immigration, what do we need in our workforce that we can't domestically achieve, uh, think about family reunification as continuing core value, which, by the way, Donald Trump is in the United States because his grandfather ultimately was brought in by a sister who claimed him under our family reunification. That ultimately led to him being born in the United States and ultimately led to him being president. It's pretty ironic. So we can do much better. That never passed the House of Representatives. I want to return to that bipartisan agreement and give dreamers an opportunity to dream. I'm proud that I got President Obama to pass DACA, and now this president has undermined it. Real quick, uh, how much of this race, 30 seconds left, how much of this race is about Donald Trump, how much about Bob Eugen? For you. Oh, it, it, it's going to be of what I achieved for New Jersey, and it's going to be about Eugen being another vote for Donald Trump. United States Senator, the senior senator of New Jersey, Bob Menendez. Senator, thank you for joining us. Thank Stay you. right there. Again, folks, the election is on November the 6th. Um, this program, other great programs, particularly on public broadcasting, you'll find meaningful conversation about the issues that matter to you most. But democracy is not a spectator sport. So make sure you get out there and vote on the 6th of November. I'm Steve Adubato. Thank you so much for joining us. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Agnes Veris NJTV studio at 2 Gateway. Funding has been provided by RWJ Barnabas Health, the law firm of Gibbons PC, New Jersey Resources, Summit Medical Group, Verizon, Delta Dental of New Jersey, International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825. And by these public-spirited organizations, individuals, and associations committed to informing New Jersey citizens about the important issues facing the Garden State. You may not have heard of TAVR. Raj and Sandhya have. It's the minimally invasive alternative to open-heart valve replacement. RWJ Barnabas Health is New Jersey's leading TAVR provider, and we continue to perfect it. Patients are often back to their lives in just a few days. Innovative valve replacement surgery, because you can't be replaced. RWJ Barnabas Health, let's be healthy together.